how to turn the inverter on and off. Go to your main screen and swipe right. If you look at the bottom, you'll see AC mode. Click here and it'll go to charger only or off or on. Now you're gonna want it to be on or off. The charger only mode does not apply. So you want it to be on or off. It needs to be on when you're on shore power or when you're on generator power or you want inverter power. And it needs to be off whenever you're not using it or you're looking to conserve power. Just having the inverter on will use a little bit of power just on standby. So it's good to turn it off if you're not using it. Now even with the inverter off, you can still use all of your DC powered appliances like your slide outs, your lights, your propane furnace, your propane fridge, and other DC powered appliances. Some appliances like the microwave, the air conditioner, all of your outlets, and the residential all electric fridges need the inverter to be on for them to be powered by the battery. Now these appliances take a lot more power when going through the inverter. And this is because the inverter takes battery power, multiplies it times 10, and sends it out to your AC loads in the form of household power. These inverters are also charger units. So whenever you're on shore power or generator power, it automatically turns into a charger and starts charging your batteries and passing power through the inverter. When you unplug from shore power or your generator, it automatically switches to inverter and starts using battery power to power your AC loads. Now before you plug in the shore power or generator power, it's very important that you always set the current limit to match what you're plugging into. For instance, if you're at a 30 amp plug-in at a campground site, you can turn this number here to 30. If you're at a 50 amp campground site, change it to 50. And if you're on a household outlet, just a standard regular household outlet, you wanna change this to 15. What this does, this lets the inverter know how much shore power you're working with and anything more than that shore power has, the battery power will pick up the rest of the loads. The lower you put this number, the sooner the battery power will kick in and start picking up the loads from the shore power. So it will start assisting basically. So you look on the main screen, it'll say assist mode. Now, if you have a generator, you might want to set this a little lower. So if you have a smaller gen, you want to set this to 25. And if you have a larger gen, you want to set this to 45. If you overload the gen, what's going to happen is it'll trip the breaker on the generator or the inverter will keep going from invert mode to charge mode to invert mode to charge mode. Same thing applies at some campgrounds, even though it might be a 30 or a 50 amp plug-in, you might have to set this down to 25 or 45 because sometimes it'll overload the what they have there at the campgrounds. When you're not on shore power or generator power, this number doesn't make any difference. It's not going to affect anything. It's only when you're on shore power and when you're on generator power. You can tell that your shore power is working by looking at the main screen. It'll look like this and you'll see shore power in the red box coming in. It represents shore power and the inverter will either say bulk, absorb, or float. And if it's in assist mode, it'll say assisting. So those are the two main things that you need to do with this system. There's not much else to it, but you do need to turn the inverter on and off as necessary. And you also need to set this current limit whenever you're on shore power and on generator power. And other than that, the system pretty much runs itself. And all you have to do is go to the main screen and watch what's going on with your system and monitor your usage.